everyone, it's Hannah and today I thought I would chat to you about how I managed to uh, fulfil 140 yarn advent calendars with a newborn. A few weeks ago I asked uh, what kind of videos people wanted to see from me and a few people said they wanted to see, wanted to know the logistics of advent calendars with a newborn. If you are new to the yarny world or you're unfamiliar with what a yarn advent calendar is, it is uh, basically what it sounds like. 24, well at least my advent calendar, was 24 20 gram mini skeins with uh, an optional 100 gram skein and also some extras thrown in as well. I'm not going to give too many details on it purely because it is, it hasn't been opened yet, it's not advent yet and it is this current year's advent calendar that I will be chatting about today. Um, yeah, it's been a long time in the making. I got them sent off at the beginning of October or within the first week of October, I think, first week and a bit, uh, which is usually what I aim to do because it allows plenty of time for them to arrive. I get a bit nervy if I'm sending them in November, so I've not done that ever. I think the earliest I've ever sent them was maybe end of September. Maybe I've always sent them at the beginning of October. First, in 2020, I needed to get them all sent before I moved house, so that was the fun time then. But anyway, I did 140 this year. A few years ago I did 90 and said I'm never ever doing more than 90 and here we are, 140. It's the most I've ever done. Last year I did 128 and yeah, we've did just 12 more this year. I think maybe 140 is my max capacity, but we'll see. So the 2024 advent calendar started much earlier than it usually does. Usually advent calendars, I kind of, kind of get the idea in like, February, March time and I start and I sell them in April, no I sell them in May and then I start dyeing them up June, July, August. This year was a little bit different. Back in 2023 I did like a collaboration with a bunch of yarn dyers where we built, we dyed some yarn based on a Christmas film and I didn't do too many of, I didn't do too many, I just did sort of an in-stock one and no one really knew why. I didn't do a pre-order for them. I was in my first trimester. <laughs> So I was trying to keep my workload light and yeah, I did a colorway based on a Muppet's Christmas Carol, the Muppet Christmas Carol even, and I loved it. It's this one of my, it is my favorite Christmas film. I've watched it every single year for as long as I can remember. It is our family Christmas film. Every family has their own Christmas film, don't they? And ours is the Muppet Christmas Carol and I'm obsessed. I love it. It's, it's one of my faves. It never gets old. Um, so. I dyed up a colourway called Even the Vegetables Don't Like Him. I was like, this is actually really fun. My yarn has always been D&D &D themed, Dungeons and Dragons themed, or like fantasy, and it was really nice to get inspiration from somewhere else. So I thought, you know what, 2024, I'm going to do a The Muppet's Christmas Carol uh, advent calendar. I'm not selling it to you because I've sold them all. Uh, that's not true. I'm not selling it to you because what, yes, I have sold them all, I've sent them all off, but also I do have some that I've held back in case anything goes wrong in the post. Um, so if you do actually want one, keep an eye out on probably Instagram as to when they'll go on general sale. It's usually in November. But I, yes, decided that this was going to be the theme back in December last year. Uh, usually I'm not that prepared, but I decided to be this year. To make my life a little bit easier with advent calendars, I always dye them all on the same base. I know a lot of people do offer a variety of bases, but I like to uh, I like to make life easy on myself, basically. So I always offer it on my BFL base. I asked on last year. I asked on Patreon. I did a poll and asked people what they what base they wanted, and most people said the BFL base, which I don't lie surprised me a little bit because Merino's always seems to be a popular base with other dyers, but with me, BFL is my most popular base. So we went with the sturdy sock theme and that 7525 Superwash BFL nylon. That makes it much easier because then I could start dyeing it up before selling them. So one of the reasons that I was able to get or able to do all of this advent, get it all done, was because I started dyeing them in March. This meant that I had to buy the yarn before I even sold the advents. Um, which is a little bit scary. I wasn't sure if I would even sell 140 advents and was pleasantly surprised that they sold out in two hours. Um, yeah, 
very, it was, I was shocked in the best possible way. But I started dyeing them back in the, towards the end of March. Uh, where So I was in my second trimester at that point and the goal was to get them all dyed before I got too pregnant, basically. That year I had bought myself an oven to streamline yarn dyeing. Before that I was just dyeing on induction hobs, which works really, really well and I love that technique. But I needed to streamline it, make it quicker, make it easier on myself, so I wasn't down the dye shed for hours and hours and hours, like I was when I'm just dyeing on four induction hobs, doing four trays at a time. I could do 15 trays at a time and that made it much easier. I chose 140 as the number because I can fit 20 mini skeins in a tray and that means that I could do two colorways in a day, seven trays each, 14 trays, gap at the bottom, jobs are good in. So I started dyeing them at the end of March and basically cho I chose to sort of dye them chronologically as I went through the film. So I'd watch a bit of the film and be like, cool, this is the, I watched the film in its entirety and wrote down all of the inspiration. And then as I was dyeing up the sort of name that I'd picked out, I was like, right, I'll watch this scene, I'll watch that scene and dyed them up. It was a really fun process because oh, I feel like I've just been watching the film all year. It's great. And I started dyeing them up very, very early on. I don't usually dye them up until I've sold them. So I know that one, so I have the money to buy the yarn. Two, so I know that my hard work won't be wasted. <laughs> basically. But I was very fortunate they all sold. It was very scary. But I'm very glad that I did start as early as I did. I managed to get them all done, I believe, by the end of May. Because I had my baby at the beginning of July, sort of in the first week of July. So I got them all done by the end of May, which was really good. I It got to the point I'm not a small lady at the best of times, so then when I got pregnant as well, I got quite big. So I f was worried that I would struggle to bend to put the yarn in the bottom of the oven. If I let myself get too pregnant, I wouldn't be able to dye yarn. It does involve a bit of heavy lifting. It does involve a lot of bending and standing and whatnot. I, was, I will say I was very fortunate that I had quite an easy pregnancy. I had, did have an easy pregnancy. I didn't have issues with pelvic girdle pain. I didn't have terrible morning sickness. I she was sat very comfortably in my stomach, um, awkwardly to the side, but she was much more uncomfortable when she actually sat where she should have been. I mean, she was upside down, which was less ideal. It's not great having a breech baby because I had to go and have her turned around. That was not fun. Um, but because she was sat to the side, it actually did make it a bit easier because she wasn't sort of pushing. She was, I had quite an easy pregnancy birth was less so but that doesn't matter so I was able to die up quite a lot by myself and get it all done um I did say I did have my husband sort of on call as it were do I said right if it gets to a point where I can't bend and put stuff in the oven you're gonna have to do it for me because I don't want to hurt myself um but it never came to that which was great and yes we got some very pregnant dying footage over on patreon <laughs> during that time so I also try to keep on top of twisting because the dyeing of the advents isn't actually the time consuming part I find anyway. The time consuming part with advents is twisting all of the mini skeins. I'm going to do a bit of maths. So I dyed up 3,360 mini skeins which also means I had to twist up 3,360 mini skeins. The reason I chose 140 and chose not to offer any more than that, I was only going to I was going to offer fewer than that actually. But the reason that I chose not to offer any more than that was because I didn't want to overfill my plate too much and stress myself out too much after the tiny one was born and I wanted to keep it somewhat somewhat manageable. Uh, in hindsight, maybe you should have done a little bit less, but I managed it anyway, so it's fine. I didn't want to sell hundreds of them and then be stressed out trying to do it on my own with a baby and goodness knows what. So, because I didn't know how my birth was going to be. I didn't know what I was going to be like postpartum. Could have been awful. I mean, wasn't great, but anyway. I watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy. So I managed to get all of the yarn dyed by the end of May, which meant in June when I was pretty pregnant by that point, my job was twist, maybe in the first week of June I dyed up the 100 grams gains. Anyway, June, my job was to sit on the sofa being far too warm and twist up 
mini skeins. That was my job for that month and even the beginning of July. Basically until the baby was born. Was sitting on the sofa right here with this little table that you're currently sat on, watching Grey's Anatomy on the TV behind me, twisting up mini skein after mini skein after mini skein after mini skein after mini skein. It takes so long. Each mini skein takes at least five seconds just to twist. I cut the ties off and floof it as well. So each one is about 30 seconds. And while that doesn't sound like a long time, it's a long time. Also, it's incredibly boring. <laughs> But it was the perfect thing for me to do while my stomach was out here and I didn't really know what else to do. So that was what I did through June. I had also started doing it a bit before because the worst thing that you could do if you're dying yarn advent calendars is to leave all the twisting till the last minute because you will be absolutely sick of it and hate your life a little bit. I've done that before way too many times and it was very, very stressful and I had some very light, late nights twisting up mini skeins. So then the baby is born. I haven't finished twisting up all of the mini skeins at this point and I have not twisted up all the 100 grand skeins. All of the yarn is completely dyed. Every, all of my extras are ordered. Some of them have been received. I still needed to order bags, print labels, blah, blah, blah. Baby is born. I take six weeks off um, fully of doing anything. In hindsight, I should have done some yarn twisting whilst she was still in full potato mode and would sleep where you put her and was um, just very fresh. I should have done a bit, a tiny bit more work then, but I wasn't in the best headspace postpartum. So I took six weeks off fully and then I was like, right, I'm getting back to it. And a lot of the final yard twisting I did, I did with a baby strapped to me. So then it came to packing the advent. I managed to get everything all twisted, everything all done, and then it came to packing the advents. My mum and dad came to stay, and whilst they were here, I had them watch the tiny one, whilst I set up the conservatory and ran up and down two flights of stairs, fetching all of the Ikea bags of yarn. I fit two colourways in an Ikea bag, so that is 12 Ikea bags. I tried to make it easy for myself and have like days one and two in the same bag, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine, nine, nine. And um, that made it so much easier because I could just be like, this is here, blah, blah. And then when I'm picking the yarn, I'm just go, going around. So much, so much easier. But I got it all set up. Lovely. In previous years, I pack advents in about maximum five days. Um, they're incredibly long days. Uh, I've usually... I. I've done them in three days before when I did 90. I just did three days of 30 advents and it was absolutely disgusting and I hated my life. I was in so much pain at the end of it. My knees were absolutely, oh, terrible. I've got terrible knees. This year, I took just under two weeks, which uh, was long, very long. I wasn't a massive fan of it taking that long. I'll be completely honest with you. But at the same time, not much else I could have done about it really. I had to baby wear. Just before I wrapped up all of the 100 gram skeins, the tiny one decided that she didn't like falling asleep and being put down for a nap as she had done every single day before that. She all of a sudden didn't stay asleep when I laid her down and she all woke up. That was a very stressful day when I was trying to gift wrap 120 100 gram skeins. And she wouldn't be put down for a nap. And I just about lost my mind a tiny bit. And then the next day I was like, I should have just put her on. Why didn't I just put her on? So from then on, she was worn for every nap. <laughs> it's been intense. A lot of the advent packing was done with her asleep on my chest. Basically for the whole time of the advent packing, she would feed for 45 minutes, be awake for a quarter of an hour and then need a nap for two hours, rinse and repeat. So actually it was a little bit helpful. She was still quite in, I don't know, I don't know. And then as soon, almost as soon as Advent's done, I caught a cold, I feel much better now. And uh, she decided she needed much less sleep, which is great because I can actually do things with her now. We can like practice rolling and like play. Whereas before she was like, I'm too tired to do anything, which is fine. So she's a bit more awake now, which is good but also means that I have to entertain her. <laughs> but basically for the whole of the advent packing time, she was asleep on my chest. Uh, it wasn't easy doing it like that. I was only doing about 10 a day, 
towards the end I did 20 I did 20 in a day my sister came around on one of the days and helped me out which was very helpful um, and that was great because we just bashed out 20 then and then at the very end I think I did 30 over the span of two days I did a lot of packing in the evenings after she went to bed uh, so we had some late nights not late late but as someone who goes to bed at nine o'clock going to bed at half ten is quite a late night <laughs> by the time I got them all done and had them all in the room I needed to get them in the envelopes uh, Mario was so good and took would take her out for walks and would like watch her and, and stuff in between feeds and whatnot and so I was able to get a good chunk of packing done when he was here and um, yeah I just sorted out the postage in the evenings or whilst she was napping on me because that's a very easy thing to do and then I just print out all the labels I took 30 to the post office and then the rest I just thought you know what I'm having them collected because I could fit 10 in two Ikea bags F I could fit five in each Ikea bag and so I put them on and there was one point where I wore her and just loaded up the pram with <laughs> um, packages and went to the post office Anyway, by the time that that was done, I was like, you know what, the final hundred I'm just having collected because I'm done with trying to manoeuvre going to the post office with all these massive bags and a baby. So I, yeah, stayed up late, packed them all up, loaded them in, and so the next day, that only takes about two hours. Like, it doesn't actually take that long to put the labels on the envelopes and the envelopes in the mail sacks. It doesn't take... That bit doesn't take a long time. That took me about two hours one evening after she went to bed. Two and a half? Anyway, after she went to bed, I cracked on with that. So it is just gone ten past ten at night, as you can tell. Uh, and I've just finished doing all the advents. There's 18 mail sacks in total. There's two out in the kitchen and then the rest are in here. Oh, with 99 advents in, uh, 30 have already gone to the post office. So, yes, I cannot, I genuinely can't believe that I have done that many advents with a newborn. That's actually bananas, but um, I did. I mean, I didn't do them all with a newborn. I packed them with a newborn in the house. I, uh, I did them whilst pregnant, <laughs> which is also mad to think about. And then the next morning I called up Roma and said, hello. I'd like to book an ad hoc collection, please come and get my 18 mail sacks. That would be delightful. Then they called me up and were like, we've got an order for 18 mail sacks to be collected. Are they ready? I'm like, they're ready. Oh, they're ready. Uh, and then they came and took them all, which was great. So, yeah, that is how I managed to do 140 advent calendars this year with a newborn, is I dyed all of it before she was born and before I was too pregnant. I twisted most of it before she was born and whilst I was too pregnant <laughs> um, and then finished it off after she was born. I did a lot of the packing whilst she was asleep and strapped to my chest and um, basically without my husband's help and also my sister came coming around on one day was incredibly helpful but without my husband taking out the tiny one for walks and whatnot I, it gave me a chance to get them all done and yeah it takes a village it takes a village but my parents don't live that close by so um, yeah I couldn't call on them to come around and help or anything so Mario was incredibly helpful and when he was here he'd look after her while I'd crack on and do loads and yeah that was how I managed to do my advents late nights help looking after the tiny one. And just little and often, I think is the main key part here, is I just managed to do it because I did them little and often and didn't aim to do too many, didn't 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 sell too, too many. I mean, 140 is a lot, don't get me wrong. I don't know how I'm going to do it next year when I have a one-year-old. Mario seems to think it's going to be quite chill. I don't think it will, because she will not be asleep as much. <laughs> anyway thank you so so much for watching i hope you found that interesting and if you didn't that's also fine if you would like to leave me a comment down below let me know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see if there's anything else that i anything i missed out um anything you want answered let me know leave me a comment down below and 
yeah uh thank you so so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media links can all be found in the description box below along with anything else that i think you might find interesting and with all that being said i will see you very soon in my next video bye